Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about a subject that is near and dear to my heart. The monetization of Legends of Runeterra. I've been a card game nerd since I was a kid. I had a massive collection of Pokemon cards and even played in a few tournaments. I played Magic the Gathering for decades and went to FNMs almost every week. I've played games like Yu-Gi-Oh, the DBZ card game, Artifact, Gwent, Marvel Snap, and so many, many more. If there's a TCG or a CCG out there, I've probably played it. And my favorite of the entire genre is Legends of Runeterra. Its art and lore are second to none, and its balanced back and forth gameplay make it more fair and interactive than any game I've ever played before. I've been playing this game since the open beta, and I created this channel just to post some of my silly deck ideas. So when Riot Games announced that they laid off 530 people and came out with this article, my heart sank. So the first part of this video, I'm going to read this article and talk about what's going on at Riot Games and what the future of Red Legends of Runeterra looks like. The second part, we're going to discuss the issues with the monetization of Legends of Runeterra. And then the third part, we're going to have my proposed solutions. So before we continue, I want to make one thing perfectly clear. I am not a business guru. I have no idea the finances and inner workings at Riot Games. The ideas suggested here may not be the only problems with the game, and my solutions may not be possible from a business perspective. I don't think of myself as smarter or better at business or design than anyone at Riot Games. This is simply my perspective. I'm merely coming at this as a hardcore fan who really wants this game to succeed and wants to support it so it can become the best business it can be. The people who work on Riot Games are incredibly talented people who put in a ton of hard work. I'm just basically saying, this is what I would spend my money on. Let's read this article. Hello everyone, I'm Dave Guskin, executive producer and game director for Legends of Runeterra. I wanted to catch you up on what's going on with lore after the news today, talking about the 530 people laid off. Take a moment to talk about what this means for the future of the game. Let's jump into why we're here today. The truth is that despite lore being an incredible game developed in tandem with the community, lore has struggled over the years to find its footing as a business. While we at Riot are extremely passionate about lore and our community, we also need to ensure lore is sustainable as a business so we are able to continue investing in ex games, experiences, and players across our ecosystem. However, we haven't been able to get to a point of sustainability with our approach thus far. In alignment with the larger riot-wide business changes going on, we needed to make some very hard decisions about the future of lore. Starting today and continuing over the next few months, we will begin the process of reducing the size and scope of our lore team that is focused on sustainability, making the game you love. Unfortunately, this does mean the lore team has been impacted by Riot's organizational changes. This is obviously not an outcome anyone wanted, but we truly believe that this more focused team will propel our lore towards the point of sustainability for our community. There are still lots of things to get excited about for the future of lore, but over the next few weeks, we'll be focused on the people and the impact to them from these changes which they should because the people's lives come first 530 people it's a lot of people's lives incomes that are greatly affected i've talked about this before in how we've invested a lot of time and resources into lore to give the team as much runway as possible in an attempt to make the business work and the truth is we haven't been able to do that. Every shift over the past couple of years has been done with the goal of achieving sustainability, but that has required other games here at Riot to subsidize Lore's exploration to find a business model that works. We know these constant shifts have meant a lot of whiplash for all of you and our direction, and that is, and that this new direction in scope may feel like a blow. However, this current path is necessary to provide Lore a way forward and to enable us to keep the game around for to play for years to come essentially it's not profitable and we need to make the team size shrink or we'd have to remove the game altogether and so this is the best that they could come up with and it's a lot of external pressure coming from the top of riot it is what it is 
After we've regrouped as a team, Legends of Runeterra will once again recenter and refocus, this time with the rising star of Path of Champions, forming the core of the business. The Path of Champions is already a popular and rewarding experience enjoyed by the majority of our audience, and we're excited, excited, and we're excited to explore what else we can delight players with in its space. The new refocused team will be led by my good friend and strategist, Eric Shen, I don't know anything about him, who has done incredible work over the past years to make lore the best product it can be while preserving what makes it a great game. Eric brings a fresh perspective to the leadership team and I'm and is excited to continue serving Lore's community as an advocate both within the lore leadership team and as a broader league studios team. I cannot wait to see what the team comes up with under his leadership as the executive producer. So they're talking a lot about Path of Champions here and that that's going to be the new focus of the game, which I understand Path of Champions has been a surprise hit it's one of them, the things that keeps people playing and it doesn't require a ton of money for them to invest into his experience, right? Not nearly as much as balancing, retooling, and coming out with new cards does. Uh, so I can understand the leap to that, but I just think that people who play this game uh, for its like competitive scene and its balance, uh, they are a portion of the Path of Champions players too. So good for Eric Shen, and I hope that the, it works out. I hope he can bring something fresh to Path of Champions and make it interesting. I do think that it's lacking. They came out with these storylines that didn't have like uh, the ending, the finisher to the storylines. So it'd be cool for them to reinvest in that. I do worry that by taking uh, time away from like balance and competitive, their go Path of Champions is gonna see a blow too. This game that they're heralding is, oh, everyone's playing Path. I don't think that's going to be true if the broader game gets less support. But I could be wrong. As for me, I've spent the last five years on Legends of Runeterra team, first as a cars designer and eventual gameplay design lead, and then head of gameplay, game director, and now finally executive producer. Over my time on the game, I've seen a lot of big, exciting swings. I'm really proud of the diversity of champs, including Nora, Jack, and Elder Dragon, which are exclusives to the game, and a deck archetypes that we've had throughout the year. It's a testament to the strength of our DNA, design narrative art team, and that our expectations, and that it's now fully featured mode with the Path of Champions. Sure. The goal now is to lean into and deliver on those successful pieces in a more sustainable way, continuing to produce champions that players know and love and more content to the path of champions. So they say here, continuing to produce champions that players know and love. So it's suggested that they will continue to release new cards and they will continue to adapt champions from League of Legends into Legends of Runeterra how frequently and whether or not we're going to get balance and variety patches, that stuff probably is drastically changing now. Um, this is your game, and in partnership with Eric and the other dedicated devs, and even greater game it shall be. My time with Lore is ending, but it's, I'll still be here at Riot working on other games and cheering from the sidelines as a fan and as a player. Thanks for everyone for your patience and understanding in these difficult times, and thank you for letting me be part of this incredible community and the journey we've taken so far. If you're looking for more details, we'll go into a first look at what comes next for Lore on to, on February 2nd in chat with me, Eric, Mark Merrill, and Andre Van Roon. I hope I'm saying that right. Alongside with an FAQ for more details on specific changes. So David Tron, Dave Guskin, awesome dude, legendary, and this game wouldn't be what it is without him. So uh, shame to see him go, but hopefully it's going to, it's going to be a positive future so so what i take from all this is pretty simple legends of runeterra has never been profitable the entire company has to downsize and focus on things that are profitable so to keep this game going they're shrinking it down to what they feel is still engaging and still able to make money um and it's clear that the what's been going on hasn't been working and we are unlikely to keep up the cycle that they promised us just over a year ago. That cycle was an expansion, then a month later, a balance patch, and then a month later, a variety patch, and then the cycle renews itself. And they actually kept up with that cycle all the way up until this January, where they did none of that. Um, so that was probably a harbinger of this, of what was to come. That makes me think that we're probably done with that cycle more than likely what will happen and you know we'll learn more on february 2nd but i believe expansions will come out kind of the same pace that expansions were coming out about three or four a year but that will be the only major patch 
There won't be any more balance patches or variety patches. Expansions will come out with balance alongside them, but the era of monthly metas is probably gone. Instead, we'll probably move to what is more like a three or four month meta, which is actually more similar to Magic the Gathering. The game clearly isn't making any money, and that makes me wonder, is there a way it could? So let's talk about the issues with making profit off of Legends of Runeterra. Many issues arise when trying to monetize a game like Legends of Runeterra, and our first point might be the most important of all, Riot's free-to-play model. Riot as a company has made its money by creating a free-to-play addictive experience that's financed by selling cosmetics. And this makes sense for a game like League of Legends. Players play multiple champions and many skin options, and when a new skin comes out, it makes the champ they have already put thousands of hours into feel fresh and new again. That model is very difficult to make work with a card game. Card games traditionally require the player to pay for cards. The team working on the cards only makes its profit when a new set is released and people buy the new cards. In a free-to-play model, all the work on the art, mechanics, and lore isn't profitable on release, and most of the player base will get the cards for free. I personally have enough shards that I could stop playing the game for a year and still purchase every card on release. I actually think the free-to-play model is one of the biggest attractions to this game, but it does mean you lose out on the primary economic driver for card game profits. So you have to make your money off cosmetics, which brings us to our second issue, one-off cosmetics. Let me explain. In Legends of Runeterra, there are only a few cosmetics you can actually purchase. Most of these can only have one option displayed at a time. For example, boards and guardians. You can only have one board and one guardian at a time, and once you have a combo that matches, you aren't likely to buy another one even if you switch decks. Some players like to match the deck and the board, but most just want a board that isn't the base one, that's custom, and a guardian that isn't just a poro. Once you sell one of those to every player that wants one, future guardians and boards are a waste of time to make, unless they start doing fancy stuff like blasting your opponent's cards whenever they are destroyed. Card backs are similar in that you can only have one selected, but because it is actually connected to the card and not just the background you play on, people are more likely to buy different card backs for different decks. That being said, once I buy a Samira card back, I am unlikely to buy a different card back for any Samira deck I make going forwards, regardless of what the other champion is, therefore limiting my desire to buy more card backs. Emotes have a lot more options, and now that you can choose any emote for your collection, buying more seems like it makes sense. But the truth is, there are only so many concepts or ideas you want to express to your opponent, and once you have an emote you like for each of them, there is no need to buy more. This is why there is only one cosmetic that consistently made money for Legends of Runeterra, champion skins. But they are actually the third and final issue with cosmetics. The greatest hype and influx of players the game gets is when a new expansion and new champions are released. Many players of this game just love the IP and want to see how their favorite champion is translated from League of Legends into a card game. Those who have money want their decks to stand out from others, so they purchase skins. One would think that just like League of Legends, making multiple skins for the champions people like would be profitable, but it really isn't. And there actually is a simple reason for this. In League of Legends, champions and their skins are your entire playing experience. Even if they don't change the visuals or voice lines, just the new clothing feels like you're doing something different. Although, I would guess without having any data that the skins that do add voice lines and change effects sell better. In Legends of Runeterra, however, champions are just a part of your deck. Buying a skin doesn't feel like you are fully immersed in a new experience. You won't even see that champion in a decent portion of your matches. Champion level up animations and effects are what people play this game for. So when Riot releases a basic champion skin without new effects, level up animations, or alternate art related cards, it creates two problems. One, cheap players buy basic skins and don't buy the more expensive skins with all the bells and whistles. And two, whales don't buy the cheap skins because they aren't worth it when better skins exist. 
This dilutes the champion skin experience and turns people off from collecting multiple skins for the champs they love. So to recap, once Riot has sold you a board and guardian combo you like, a card back you like, the emotes you like, and a skin for the champions you play, the game cannot sell you anything else. It literally runs out of monetization. So where do we go from here? Is the free to play card game just a doomed model from the start? I don't think so. I think there is a massive well of potential to make money off of this game. So let's talk about solutions. My first solution is an idea so simple that I'm not sure why Riot hasn't even tried experimenting with it. The idea is alternate art for non-champion cards. Champions at most make up six cards out of your deck, which means there are 34 cards or 85% of your deck that isn't customizable. And you might be thinking, well, your previous point is that you can only buy one. So once a person has bought one, they won't buy another. And while that may be true, you still manage to get 12 to 13 purchases out of them. Not to mention decks change cards while keeping the same champions all the time. And so getting skins for the new cards becomes another purchase. Card players know that metas are inevitable. And if they want to compete, they're going to be playing against other versions of the same deck, plus or minus a few cards. So it's important for them to make their decks stand out from other players. And alternate art non-champion cards are the only way to truly do that. So there are two ways I can think of to achieve this, and they can be done separately or in combination. The first I'll call prismatic upgrades, and the other thematic alternates. Prismatic upgrades would use the current prismatic system and turn it into something more akin to Marvel Snap. Snap is interesting because it did the exact opposite as Legends of Runeterra. It's one of the most expensive card games to play, and that caused its player base to drastically drop after a strong start. The main difference is Marvel Snap makes a ton of money off the players it has kept. Now, most of that revenue is achieved through players unlocking cards, but the system I want to focus on is the way they do alternate card art. If you are unaware, in Marvel Snap, when you upgrade a card, it gets improvements to its borders, makes the art 3D and animated, and when you finally upgrade the card, it creates a variant of the card with random different effects. This would be accomplished in Legends of Runeterra by making the Prismatic Essence the resource you would use to upgrade cards. This allows you to make Prismatic Essence a premium currency. Players could unlock a small amount every week, but if they really wanted to upgrade all of their cards, they're going to buy the Battle Pass, which gives you a few cosmetics, but is mostly there to give you cards, shards, and a ton of Prismatic Essence. This way, the game basically becomes a subscription service in the form of a Battle Pass if you want all the cards in your deck to be similar skins or theme. You can also offer bundles with bonus prismatic essence. This solution seems like it would be the easiest to do as most of the animation, 3D effects, and particle effects wouldn't be difficult to mass produce. Once Riot came up with the system and effects they like, it could be implemented on every card. While I do think it is a possible solution, it would be a bit derivative of Marvel Snap and may not work as well as I'm imagining, which is why thematic alternates might make more sense. Thematic alternates would be alternate art that is related to specific champion skins. Think champion spells for champion skins. Say Riot comes out with a Pulsefire Teemo skin to match Caitlyn's Pulsefire skin. They could also release an alternate art of all Puffcap cards in Piltover and Zon in the Pulsefire style. They sell them for whatever price point makes sense, and suddenly I'm throwing Riot money so I can have an entire Pulsefire Puff Cap deck. This might also be cost effective, as Riot could just commission artists to make alternate versions of the cards when they make the first image. I have to imagine, although I could be wrong here, that it wouldn't be that difficult to have an artist make three versions of the same card if they did it all at the same time. Thematic alternates would be the most fun option, in my opinion, and could even be sold as bundles, but might be the more difficult option, as each card art would have to be made by hand. Prismatic upgrades and thematic alternates would solve one of the core problems with monetization, which is that the first art on the card 
is free and makes no profit. This makes the second or third art where Riot actually makes their money back to pay the artists and the developers. These are the only solutions I would actually consider though. My last idea comes down to champion skins. First of all, all champion skins should have an alternate level up animation, alternate special effects, and alternate art for the champion spell or any generated cards. No more diluting the pool with these basic skins. Does this mean all champion skins are now $25 to $30? Yeah, they should be. This is where Riot makes most of its money, and people will gladly pay that if they only have to do so twice for their champs and they get real value out of it, while the rest of the deck is relatively cheap to upgrade. On top of that, no champ should ever be released without a skin, as the best time to sell a skin is when there's hype for the new card. Riot has gotten better with this, as all their most recent champions have a skin on release, but the choices for their skins should be more related to their gameplay, in my opinion. Take the most recent expansion with Mordekaiser, Morgana, and Elder Dragon. Mordekaiser and Elder Dragon both got old god skins, but the two don't work in a deck together. Dragon Boons are lost when a creature dies and not regain when it's revived, so the two don't have any real synergy. Morgana works great with Mordekaiser, but she got a Coven skin instead. On release, there should have been a skin line that ties Morgana and Mordekaiser together, and a skin line that ties Elder Dragon and Volibear together. This way, when the cards come out, there's a clear alternate Old Gods version of the entire Volibear Elder Dragon deck, uh, complete with Old Gods versions of all the non-champions cards. And then there's also a Coven alternate version of the Morgana Mordekaiser deck, complete with its own non-champion alternate art cards. This would make champion skins more impactful and more worth their money on release. So to summarize, I think Riot Games was focusing on the wrong parts of this game to monetize, and I think there is a gold mine of potential money to be made from its loyal fans. That being said, all of these ideas would require an upfront cost to make happen, and there would be no promises it would succeed. With the current state of Riot Games, I don't think they'd be willing to put more upfront money into this game than they already have. This game is fantastic, and I think it's a shame that Riot Games never gave it its fair chance. Sure, they may have given it plenty of a runway to get started, but they never promoted the game. I've seen tons of commercials for TFT, League of Legends, and Valorant, but I have never once, not one single time, ever seen a single Legends of Runeterra commercial. Never. Many people in the card game community don't even know this game exists, and you can't expect to make money off a product if you don't promote it. Hopefully, this is a bump in the road, and Runeterra makes a resurgence in the future. If we continue to get new cards but stop getting the regular balance patches and variety patches, I'll still play the game and make content for it. But if they stop releasing cards and only come out with Path of Champions content, then I'll likely stop. Which sucks, because I love this game. Maybe we'll learn more on the second, but to be honest, I'm not optimistic. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I would like to hear your thoughts on Lore's monetization in the comments down below. This video took a ton of time to write the script for, record, and edit. So if you did enjoy the content, please hit the like and subscribe button as it would help this small channel grow immensely. I love you all. Please have a wonderful day and keep on rising.